And um, yesterday, yesterday, when we were um, uh, when we were um, talking about the World Cafe, we put this definition up about what a Soviet city was. I won't read it. We saw it yesterday. So um, resilient to which shocks and stresses. Um, Homer Dixon outlined those, I think, very effectively. But the, the three that you'll start to see having impacts, or we will start to see having impacts on cities that we'll have to in some way deal with, come to terms with, or deny and ignore, take your pick, are population, climate change, and energy scarcity, sometimes referred to in the colloquial as peak oil. Three billion people are going to be added to the planet over the next 50 years if, if the current demographic trends continue and there aren't some sort of famine or diseases that changes those numbers. Two degrees um, by 2050 that you saw uh, Homer Dixon's hockey stick graph yesterday, uh, curve um, for climate um, uh, warming, and of course energy scarcity he, quite, he covered quite eloquently. So those are the stresses and causes of potential shocks. So um, in addition to those are compounding threats and weaknesses. And this is sort of closer to home. This is closer to where you are going to be working and planning. Um, for example, across North America, we have an aging infrastructure and capacity issues. And that's not just hydro infrastructure, it's water infrastructure, um, it's sewage infrastructure. The, most of our infrastructure in cities, um, with the, I guess with the exception of Waterloo, because it's, it's, it's grown so quickly in the last uh, 25 years, was put in at the, at the turn of the century and is now functioning and, 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 and built a, a, at least over the last 60 years. So it's at capacity and it's frail, thus that huge power failure. So I think not only are we going to be dealing with future shocks and stresses, but we've got existing um, infrastructure deficits and weaknesses that we have to be aware of. Um, economics. All of our levels of government are in debt. There's not, what that means is there's not a lot of capacity there to make changes. And the problem is it's not going to get any better because our population is aging and people are going to be retiring and the number of people being able to pay taxes um, is going to go down. So we, we've got a real problem on the debt issue. Also personal debt across the country and in the United States and Europe is, is quite high as well. So there's issues about capacity there. Um, as Homer Dixon pointed out as well, Food, a lot of the best soil, is now underdeveloped land. Um, so the, 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 this, although very important in the United States, is slightly less so here because we, we live in Canada and the growing season is quite short. And even if we did have all of our growing land, we would still have to deal with what do we do in the winter. I guess you could save up root vegetables and so forth. But nevertheless, how do we feed ourselves? And the fact that we've plowed a lot of our soil into suburbs is a, is a real issue. And then the urban form. We have designed our cities for cars. Um, the city form of the 19th century was for the um, horse and buggy and then uh, trolleys. And then the early um, 20th century was the same. And then cars came along and made that, um, in to many people's eyes, pointless. The reality, though, is we invest huge amounts of money, subsidize, the highway system, the um, a transportation system for cars significantly. And why this is a problem is as ed energy scarcity kicks in and the cost of all fuels goes up, it makes um, these communications, these transportation systems um, a liability. Um, and then diversity. We've very effectively over the last 25 years gone from having retail and commercial enterprises that were small mom and pop shops and medium sized Canadian firms into international firms, huge conglomerates um, that are with supply chains that tie back to China. Um, well, not, not to pick on Walmart, there's lots of other um, equally concentrated uh, uh, businesses, but what this does is it reduces the diversity of um, uh, businesses, meaning if this business fails in a city, uh, it doesn't just take out one little mom and pop shop, it takes out the whole community. So again, there is some um, weakness there. And uh, so how do we start, now we've talked about the weaknesses and the problems and the sources of potential shocks and stresses. 
So how do we start to increase the capacity for resilience in our cities? Well, we had a lot of good ideas coming out of, out of the um, World Cafe yesterday. And I think the seven key attributes of urban resilience are similar to just resilience attributes in general. One is um, sustainable energy flows. What that means is that if you have a city and it has access to energy, it controls its own access to energy, then it's got a greater chance for being more resilient than a city that has to buy energy from another city or another state. Uh, because if something happens in that other city or other state, then they, it will have an impact on the city that doesn't have it. So being able to be sustainable in your energy use and production is key. Um, it, it also obviously drives the, the, the desire or the uh, intention of reducing the need for a lot of energy. The less energy you need, the more likely you are to be able to have sustainable energy flows. Maximize flexibility, um, uh, Dixon talked about yesterday. Uh, local self-sufficiency, again, um, if you are looking at the uh, potential for resilience and things happening in other cities that are not um, uh, beneficial to your own city, economic problems happening somewhere else in the world, if you've got local self-sufficiency, the impact of those will have potentially some impact, but the impact of it will be less than if there was less self-sufficiency. Redundancy of systems. Uh, imagine you have one power plant in a city and it is taken out by a hurricane or um, it fails for whatever reason. It takes down the power for the whole city. Um, if you had a number of power stations, um, regional power stations or neighborhood power stations, then you would have less chance, you'd have greater resiliency and less chance of one, one failure causing problems for the whole. And the diversity of systems. Again, it's not clear which system will um, be better able to deal with shocks and stresses in the future. We're projecting into the unknown. So if there's a diversity of systems, um, then if one doesn't work, there are others there that may work better in that time. So diversity is good. Decentralization of systems. Um, again, this is not decentralization of um, the aggregate mass of the city um, uh, residents. It's about if you had one power plant in the center, we talked about one power plant in the center of the city, and it goes down, um, then it takes out the city. If you had a number of power plants all together, and they were all taken out because of the lo location, that's a problem. If they're spread out, then you've got security from them being isolated from one another. If an effect on one doesn't cause an effect on the other. And when I say power plant, it could be other system, it could be water system, it could be food production system, whatever. And then environmental integration. This is very key. Um, this is all, uh, this speaks to having, doing planning that takes into account the nature of the environmental context in which you're planning. Um, someone said yesterday that a major part of Waterloo is, is planned or, or built on a floodplain. That's a good example of not being environmentally integrated. Um, looking at uh, what happened in New Orleans is a very good example of not being environmentally integrated. So environmental integration, I know you get lots of, of, of great classes, courses in, in, in environment and planning. It's key for um, producing resilience. Okay, so let's see if this works. So how do we, how should we as planners plan to increase the resilience of our cities? So. Here's what you thought coming out of the World Cafe. And as I, as I read through the wiki that was put up last night, um, very good, by the way, to get that up so quickly, um, I thought all the ideas that came out of that World Cafe are all of the things that are in that, that what I would typically say would be the 10 key strategies. They came out of different tables, but in aggregate, you knew what resilience was. So, Again, what I'm saying here is a summing up of what all of you collectively know. So here's some of the ideas that came out. Potential shocks, oil supply and access, disease, natural disasters, social interest. Local food is an issue. Securing farmland for a lo 